Welcome back to my channel, Melanated Gods of Earth. Brothers and sisters, I'm your host, Ramodice the High King. And on today's clip, I would like to touch upon some developments in the situation pertaining to the Palestinian Gaza crisis as Israel goes on its genocidal campaign. If you haven't subscribed already, Royal Family, make sure you head over to my page. And if you enjoy the vibe, smash the subscribe. Let the algorithm know what's good. The thumbs up, let other like minded souls know that we're out. Ja. Yes, we've been covering the situation as the international community aids in a bed, Israel committing an atrocity and therefore committing atrocities by proxy. And there was South Africa and other countries taking a strong stance against the government of Israel. Mm. And in recent videos I had reported that they have been taking steps, that we as South Africa have been taking steps to sever ties permanently with the government of Israel, calling them out on the international stage for genocide. And crimes against humanity and the west to support them in their endeavors to eradicate the people of palestine and on today's clip though i would like to share two particular videos one particular one pertaining to the situation in palestine and gaza and how the developments in our efforts to sever ties with them have developed and another the general african history events as we do on this page these are the dirty tactics used by the west to keep africa divided it's divide and conquer that's their way let's get started pando nothing unusual about recalling envoys because she has been being called all sorts of names the zionist federation in this country has been losing its mind since their support against israel and i think i will do a clip on that tomorrow but today though an update well, our international relations minister, Dr. Naledi Pandu, says there's nothing unusual about recalling its envoys. Uh, she also called for an immediate end to hostilities in the Middle East during a meeting with Ukraine's foreign affairs minister. News from Africa's Zian Dengno reports. We know the pain of people suffering in the Middle East better than anyone else. This man is from uh, Ukraine. Now, they've been trying to get sympathy from us, and we're, we've been saying that, no, we will not support double standards. Because our wounds are the freshest one. Ukraine's foreign affairs minister has taken exception to perceptions that his country is not taking solidarity with the plight of civilians in the Middle East. Dmitry Kuleba says, on the contrary, their views on the Israel-Hamas conflict are nuanced. And this is why their abstention at the UN General Assembly vote should be interpreted as such. It's fair that people are paying more attention to the new devastating conflict in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we do not feel that Ukraine is receiving less attention on the agendas of, uh, on the global agenda. So media attention shrinked, but political attention didn't. Kuleba reiterated his country's call for a two-state solution in that region. He says there's nothing to be said about the timing of the visit after being probed about whether this is part of a charm offensive to counter the possible waning support from the global south. Mm -hmm. I'm here. Mm -hmm. And they've been crying tears, especially nowadays since the West is now cutting fun funding to the Ukrainians. And dumping it all into Israel. While Israel is being called out for crimes against humanity, international community's attention is on the plight of the Palestinians. Witnessing in 4K modern day Holocaust against the people of Gaza, supported by Western governments. It's crazy. We're not, not on a snap visit. We've been working on this visit for, uh, for a while. Going to Africa mm. is our consistent policy, and mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with the today's headlines in any media outlet of the world. It's a strategy. It's not demand-driven. International Relations Minister Dr. Naledi Pando has slammed Israel's ambassador to South Africa, Eliev Belotsarevsky, for his comments related to the war. The lady has been raising hell on the international community she has not been playing games not been mincing words telling them outright 
That record doesn't play games, fam. We know about date. We know atrocity. We know. We know the international community's efforts as they support these institutions. We know them well. She says their comments are akin to those of U.S. Ambassador Ruben Brigetti's claim that the government loaded arms bound for Russia to continue waging its war in Ukraine. That and they devastated our currency with that well-placed lie. Strategy. Economic They're sabotage. simply baseless and without evidence. There seems to be a strange practice Check among it. some ambassadors in South Africa mm -hmm. that they can just say what they like. I don't know if it's because it's an African country and they disrespect us, but it's something that we should not tolerate. Pandor mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. straightforward. Also clarified why the government has recalled its diplomats from Israel. When there's a situation which is causing a great deal of harm and concern uh, to a country, you would uh, get your officials to come back to the national setting in order to provide you with a full briefing so that you can make a determination as to whether there is any potential for you to be of assistance. Minister Pandor is expected to make a statement on the Israel-Hamas war in Parliament where she'll be answering questions in the National Council of Provinces. For mm, mm, mm. And of course the powers that should not be have been raising Blood pressure in how South Africa has been responding to the their situation. Now there's a clip I also want to share. I'm not sure how much of it I can since it seemed as though it was age restricted. Which is um the French news outlet. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not gonna share the whole news segment, just a teensy weensy bit. Relentless bombing of the Gaza Strip. What up? Running was becoming quote on failing Israel's ambassador operations in Gaza. The South African government also hinting that it was considering expelling Israel's ambassador in Pretoria, saying that his position was becoming quote untenable. Here's the latest with Kaunin Lambole. Not considering in the process of doing. Another rebuke of Israel's relentless bombing of the Gaza Strip, this time from South Africa. Why uh, recall our uh, embassy officials? This is normal practice. We believe the nature uh, of response by Israel has become uh, one of collective punishment. Also, mm -hmm. South Africa. Another government official described what was happening in Gaza as genocide. A genocide under the watch of the international community cannot be tolerated. Another holocaust in the history of humankind. We're not playing not here, boy. South Africa also threatened action against the Israeli ambassador over remarks he made against voices that are critical of the Israeli army's actions in Gaza. Yep. That's probably why it's been age restricted, so I'm gonna... Skip ahead, past that scene, maybe I'm going to blur it, it's fine. Over remarks he made against voices that are critical of the Israeli army's actions in Gaza. <laughs> Thousands of Palestinians in the enclave are reported to have been killed in reprisal strikes since Hamas's deadly attack on October 7th. Over the past weeks, there have been a number of pro-Palestinian demonstrations across South Africa. Many demonstrators and politicians liken the plight of Palestinians to their own under the apartheid regime that ended in 1994. They are fighting for their freedom. Mandela did the same thing, took up the guns and fought for the freedom of the people of South Africa. When you are oppressed, you only have one option. From the river to the sea. A number of other. When you are oppressed under the UN Charter 242, you only have one option, and that is resistance. By any means necessary. It's crazy. That's international law. 
That is international law. Let us continue, family. Tactics they use in the West to keep Africa divided. This is a disaster. And, and let me, we need to convene the leaders of this continent to talk about this visa story. This is a disaster. And, and let me just say the following. I, 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 can't, I struggle to understand why I can land in Paris, get on a train and end up in Brussels. But if I want to move from Joburg to Khaboron, I must produce a passport. That's Who's the insane. genius that came up with the scheme? The Berlin Conference. Divide and conquer. Colonial powers split the African continent into a million pieces so they can control our resources as they saw fit. And that's been the conversation as of late too, family. They split it up according to the gold, the tea. Nowadays, the cobalt, the coltan, the uranium. Hmm? Neocolonialism, family. In full blown swing. You know, the Europeans are so quick to tell us that we can't bundle ourselves into a single block, but they've done it. I'm sorry, can, can we just pause? Just one moment, pause the time. Who designed this nonsense? Mm. Welcome to Candid Africa. Truthful and unapologetic. I'm, I'm seized to understand and failing to understand why we are not deliberately sending young people into other parts of the continent. Experience the culture, live with the people. That is a true act of liberation right there. Actively moving about the African continent, healing ourselves as a people, meeting each other, learning about each other, recognizing that we are more alike than we are different. Ubuntu, Abantu, Bayet. To come here, to be here in this beautiful country, I had to go through Ethiopia. From Ethiopia, I was in Zambia. So, so I went South Africa, Zambia, Ethiopia, Nigeria. Between now and December, I'm going to be in about eight different African countries. In that same time, it's going to be easier for me to do five different countries in Europe than it will be to do two different countries in Africa. Less layovers, less time. I'm sorry, can, can we just pause? Just one moment, pause the time. Who designed this nonsense? Who wrote the script? I have a theory. And here is... The living consequences of colonialism, fam. This is my theory. You only lock the vault where there is money. ha 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 ha. <laughs> and so maybe there's a reason you've been kept out of that neighboring country. Maybe there's a reason you've been kept out of that neighboring region. Maybe there's a reason you can't travel to that other place. Because if you were to, there is something you might do that would help us build what we all know we are capable of. So first, keep them away from each other. Second, convince them that they're enemies with each other. And third, convince them that the other one is better than the other one. And before you're done, they will hate each other so much you don't even need to pass policy or law. And in the middle of all of this, here we sit as young people, fruitfully connected by the H H HTTPS. And we're more worried about what's trending and commenting on it, rather than how do we meaningfully build with each other and do business. Mm -hmm. I came to tell you here today that I'm only interested in meaningfully building and doing business. This man is one of my most inspira inspirational influences, role models, Whatever phrase you want to use. Hmm? This is the generation that's going to unite the motherland and her people. Us right here, right now. Nothing outsiders do or say in order to keep an eye on grip on our resources is going to stop us, family. We will recognize their crimes, we will recognize their atrocities, we will recognize how they do business. As they are attempting to do Palestine bad and dirty to get their resources so they can create projects for the future. Oil, gas, canals, and how they keep the African country uh, continent broken and African countries divided so they can keep an iron grip on all of us collectively. 
telling us to split our nations and settle for two-state solutions. Meanwhile, they're united and thriving as European countries. I'm only interested in understanding how do we take the platform and put it in Johannesburg or put it in Cape Town. And how do we have not just this conversation here, but that conversation there. Because until and when Africa truly is of a single mind, it will continue to be the fodder and the meal for the rest of the global average. That's right. I don't know about you. That's but I would right. like a world slightly different for my children than the one I grew up in. Mm -hmm. What could we do when we truly come together as a single block? A week ago, I was in East Africa, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda. Today, I'm here. I make it my intention to travel the continent. Because, and on this point, I will end with this. You see, it's easy for a politician to lie to you about Pan-Africanism when you've never traveled Africa. Mm -hmm. They can tell you their version of it because they've never been there. They will tell you how Africans speak even though they've never been there. There we have it. That has been our candid speech for today. Please feel free to give your opinions in the... Thank you, brother. In royal family, that is the speech. The conversations that we as African peoples must be having to unite ourselves on the motherland and in the diaspora but to bring this clip in for a close <laughs> a friend of mine on tiktok shared a video because there have been boycotts against uh, institutions that have been known to support the crisis in palestine institutions like starbucks mcdonald's you know oh look a starbucks frappuccino <laughs> And she grabbed oh, look. a fruit it's juice. Boycott, 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 real family. The same goes for African countries that are being exploited by international powers. Boycott their tech if you can. If you can live without it. Do not go spend money on that upgrade. Mm. Africa's Niger is set to hold the gas pipeline to the west. I don't know if that's uh, copywritten. But yeah. This pipeline is going from Nigeria through Niger through Algeria all the way into Europe. That's insane. While Africa still continues to struggle with energy poverty. Nope. No, 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 family. Let me know what you think of the video. Royal family, I appreciate you for watching. Stay royal. Stay blessed. I will see you in the next. Peace.